You now have a good idea about the requirements for disks in a deduplication disk library. But there are also requirements for the library itself. In this graphic, we show a disk library with three mount paths. The mount paths within a disk library should be configured for between 2 and 8 terabytes. Each mount path within a disk library should be formatted to 64 kilobyte block size. And for disk libraries managed by Windows Media Agents, fragmentation analysis should be scheduled regularly. The library can be a dedicated library to which a single media agent has access, or it can be a shared library that multiple media agents can access. There are advantages to both methods. Next, we're going to talk about the three methods for configuring disk library data paths when using deduplication. The first method for configuring disk library paths is Direct Attached Storage, or DAS. This means the disk library is physically attached to the media agent, and each building block will be completely self-contained. Because it provides high performance, DAS could be the right method for you. However, it has no resilience providing a single point of failure. If the media agent controlling the building block fails, data stored in the disk library cannot be recovered until the media agent has been repaired or replaced. But the good news is that the data in the disk library is completely indexed and recoverable, even if the index cache is lost. Once the media agent has been reconstructed, data from the disk library can be restored. When SAN storage, another method of configuring disk library data paths, is used, each building block needs a dedicated media agent, DDB, and disk library. SAN storage can be zoned and presented to media agents by either Fiber Channel or iSCSI. Zoned storage is then presented directly to the media agent, providing read-write access to the disks. Commvault recommends that back-end disk storage in the SAN should reside in separate libraries to ensure fast and protocol-efficient movement of data. If the building block media agent fails, data cannot be restored until either the media agent can be rebuilt or the disk library can be rezoned to a different media agent. If the disk library is rezoned, it must be reconfigured in the Simpana software to the media agent that has access to the LUN. Let's look at one more method to configure the disk library. Can you see that this method's path to the storage is directly through the Network Attached Storage, or NAS, hardware? This gives NAS an advantage because paths can be configured for a disk library to read and write directly to storage. This is done by using SIFs, or NFSUNC paths. For this method, Commvault recommends configuring separate disk libraries in the Simpana software. Separate building blocks should still be used for each media agent providing read-write access to a disk library. The library can be configured as a shared library, enabling both media agents to see all storage and granting read-only access to all libraries on the NAS storage. A great advantage of this method is that if a media agent fails, any other media agent with read-only access to the library can conduct a restore operation. Now that we've finished looking at methods for configuring paths, let's discuss storage policies. Tying storage policy design to Commvault's building block guidelines will help in designing both the physical deduplication architecture and storage policy configuration. Dedicated storage policies should be created for each self-contained building block. This can be done using one of two methods. Let's take a look at each of these. When designing storage policy and building block architecture, you will need to consider that certain data types do not deduplicate well against other data types. Let's look at a good example of file system data and database data that enable different building blocks and storage policies to be configured to manage different data types. A global deduplication storage policy has been configured with a block size of 128 kilobytes. Two data management storage policies have been configured, one with a 30-day retention and the other with a 90-day retention. All deduplication blocks from both storage policies will deduplicate based on the global deduplication policy setting, but they will be retained based on the data management storage policy retention.
A second building block using a dedicated storage policy has been configured for database backups. In this example, a 256 kilobyte block has been configured, and the storage policy has a retention of 14 days. The data being managed by this storage policy will not deduplicate against any other data. You're ready to move on to the next topic, managing the DDB.